Welcome to this edition of the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm Fred McClymans, joined here by my colleague, Ron Westfall, and we're going to dive into NVIDIA and the Omniverse today. So uh, before we get into that, though, I do want to make it clear that we may talk a little bit about uh, NVIDIA and other companies out here. Um, we're trying to inform and educate and just have a conversation about what they're doing. Please do not accept anything that we offer here as any kind of um, you know, investment advice in any way. We're here for infotainment, for <laughs> infotainment, to educate, to have a good conversation. Uh, but uh, again, please don't take anything that we're talking about here as any type of uh, advice for investing in NVIDIA or any other company that we may mention today. So, um, Ron, last week, big event for NVIDIA, their big annual uh, annual event, all virtual, and they just nailed it, in my opinion. The most amazing thing that I saw in that entire session was the Omniverse. And it's sort of a, an interesting thing for somebody like uh, NVIDIA to get into because the Omniverse, it's not a chip. It's not a piece of hardware. It's software. And in fact, it's software that's based on open source software, the OpenUSD uh, toolkit. But what they've done here with it is NVIDIA has basically taken, in my opinion, sort of the same model that they've had in the past where uh, they look at industries and they really kind of break it down and say, how can we help this industry grow? What can we do to further you know, our customers' efforts moving forward? They did that in gaming. Uh, they did it perhaps accidentally with uh, Bitcoin mining. Um, certainly, they've been one of the pioneers moving into artificial intelligence and autonomous vehicles uh, with their technology. And now with the Omniverse, um, they're doing it again. So what I'd like to do, Ron, is just I'll explain a little bit about the Omniverse and, and why I think it's really cool. And then I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the technology side of that and perhaps what some of the competitors out there are, are kind of doing with this. So let's kind of step back for a moment. And when we think about Omniverse, it's really easy to think about, um, you know, the multiverse uh, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And actually, they're all really kind of tied together. So what we're talking about with the Omniverse is the ability to create a virtual 3D environment. Uh, that exists that in this case is designed to mimic the real world scenario, real world operations out there, your business, your company, your manufacturing plant, uh, your chip designs, something that's real world. Now, the cool thing about the Omniverse is the Omniverse is actually based on uh, the USD software that Pixar developed way back as a way for them to create a virtual 3D world in which their movies would exist. So what does this have to do with chips company with NVIDIA? Well, what we see happening here in the real world is the internet of things or the industrial internet of things. Sensors being put on everything that you can imagine from individuals working in a factory floor to the robotics, uh, to the assembly line devices. Everything now has the ability to be monitored in real time and to create so much data that we can create what we call a digital twin. That is essentially a virtual rendition of what's going on in the real world. So what NVIDIA has done is they've taken this concept and they've kind of blown it up and said, what we really want to do is we want to marry that with the capabilities of uh, the uh, USD technology. And we want to create a, an omniverse that allows a factory plant. In this case, some of the examples they've uh, talked about recently, uh, the Bentley Engineering, uh, they've talked about BMW that's actually taking all of their um, you know, manufacturing facilities, they're monitoring everything in real time. And that allows them to build a true working 3D version of their entire operations. And then the cool thing here is uh, the OpenUSD uh, tools that they're using for this, they actually have the ability to essentially, because they're open, uh, for other developers to plug into them, other assets, other 3D modeling tools, simulation tools, predictive analytics tools, all sorts of really cool things that you know we've been seeing in different industries now all coming together with the ability for somebody to collaborate in real time. And I'll give you a real quick example before Ron. I want to get your take on the tech underneath this because it's really cool. But you know, imagine you are modeling uh, an assembly line, and in real time you're watching in this 3D world, and you want to make an adjustment. 
well, what if we moved this portion of the assembly line over here? And what if we changed the, uh, the assets that we're using from this shelf to that shelf? What would that look like? Well, you can now simulate that in this digital twin in real time. And you can gather information from the plant floor. You can even have somebody wearing a suit with sensors on it and have them walk through the manufacturing assembly process, how they're picking things off the shelf, where they're using them. And you can see, does this really work? And then you can take that and you can model that out and go, well, based on this, what can we do to reconfigure our plant operations to be more efficient, to be more productive? What can we learn from this model that we've created, this digital twin of our real world operations to identify problem areas where a particular part uh, shortage may occur in that assembly line process or where certain robotic devices may require maintenance down the road. So it's just an incredibly rich, incredibly beautiful system that NVIDIA has come up with here. And again, like I said earlier, for me, it's just really cool that NVIDIA thinks about furthering the industry uh, as much as they do their own technology. Um, now, this is a service. Uh, you do subscribe to it. It's not something that I expect NVIDIA will make a lot of money off. Uh, I think it's about $1,800 a seat uh, for an individual user. Uh, and there's a, a $25,000 a year fee on top of that for you to be able to build your virtual digital twin of your business. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, it's really cool. That's all I can say about it. It's really cool. So, Ron, Tell me about the technology that's underpinning all of this. I mean, for this to work, it actually does need a lot of NVIDIA's chips. What's going on there? Yeah, right on, Fred. And it really was remarkable, uh, NVIDIA's GTC 2021 uh, exhibition conference uh, event uh, with uh, naturally you know, CEO Jensen Huang leading the way. And uh, I think you really hit on some of the key points about you know, the Omniverse uh, technology. It's really fundamentally a platform. Mm -hmm. It combines, uh, for example, uh, uh, Pixar's universal scene description technology uh, with uh, NVIDIA's RTX technology or uh, more appropriately real-time tracing uh, technology. And what I think is important to know about uh, the Omniverse platform is that it consists of five parts. Uh, that includes the nucleus component, uh, connect component, kit, simulation, and finally, RTX renderer. And these components, along with the, you know, the connected third-party digital content creation tools uh, you referred to, Fred, and in addition to other Omniverse microservices capabilities, constitute uh, what NVIDIA is promoting as the Omniverse ecosystem. And that's enabling these you know, fascinating, awe-inspiring digital twin uh, demonstrations uh, that we saw during the event. And out of those five components, I like to emphasize uh, two of them. Uh, the first one, naturally, is uh, Nucleus, which is the server that really manages the database sharing amongst all the clients and collaborators. And it operates under a published subscribe model. And it, as a result, it's also subject to secure access controls. And what that means is that Omniverse clients can publish modifications to the digital assets and virtual worlds to the Nucleus database, or uh, at least be able to subscribe to those changes. And uh, what's really interesting is that these changes are transmitted in real time uh, between uh, the connected applications. And mm -hmm. examples that we saw included geometry, lights, textures, mm -hmm. materials, and other data that describe uh, the virtual worlds and uh, their evolution. And so, in essence, it's like you know Minecraft for real-world business and industrial uh, applications. Uh, pretty uh, amazing. Yeah, you know, addition, you mentioned something there, Ron. Real quick, I just want to jump on this for a second. Um, the ability for um, for collaborators to subscribe to certain data sets in this model, and and I want to make sure that we don't overlook that there because if you think about the the modeling and simulation capability here. Um, it's one thing to say we in our own organization are going to create a digital twin of this facility and have access to it. But in this model here, being collaborative, what you can do is you can bring in your entire extended ecosystem, your parts suppliers, your distributors, all the people that are you know around you in your organization. And when you make changes to this system, they can subscribe to those and receive those changes in real time. So they know exactly what you're doing in that facility. And that's a huge leap. Yes. Now, it, it definitely has impact on the market. 
And that really does uh, crystallize, you know, the point about the Omniverse connectors. These are the plugins to in-demand design applications. And it really does, you know, bring in uh, that collaboration, uh, allow the ecosystem to, in essence, optimize uh, their ability to use uh, you know, the NVIDIA uh, capabilities as uh, well as the Pixar capabilities. And so this is, you know, something that will have impact uh, really on the uh, competitive terrain. Uh, specifically, I see AMD in particular having to respond, you know, to uh, NVIDIA's announcements. Uh, they recently uh, came out uh, with their own uh, announcement, uh, which is the Radeon RX uh, 6000 line, uh, their attempt to target uh, that real-time tracing uh, segment of the GPU market. Uh, and that, I think, is something that will uh, oblige you know, AMD to have to update their portfolio development efforts in this area, as well as uh, really specifically market uh, to this. And what I think is important about uh, NVIDIA's uh, RX technology, it leverages the Ampere, the Volta, and Turing-based GPUs uh, within their portfolio family. And uh, that allows them to use the Tensor cores as well as the real-time uh, real tracing cores on the Turing uh, GPUs to really drive the architecture here, to really make these breakthroughs. And uh, it's really innovative is the fact that uh, NVIDIA is uh, leveraging, uh, you know, again, the Ampere architecture. Uh, that's mm -hmm. rather distinct uh, from my perspective. And plus, you know, uh, these heavy hitting partners that include Microsoft. And Microsoft is already looking to integrate the RTX <laughs> support on their DirectX uh, ray tracing API. So this is really coming together that, you know, NVIDIA is really solidifying and, you know, maintaining their uh, uh, market leadership uh, within uh, this specific segment of the GPU market. And so, you know, watch out AM AMD or any other uh, competitors. This is something that uh, is going to have impact through the rest of this year. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a, a lot of fun to watch. And, and we've been watching it for a while. I mean, uh, the, the whole uh, Omniverse went into beta, I think it was uh, October of last year. Uh, when uh, when that started to, to come out there, you know, I think the uh, the really cool part here, though, is if you take the different pieces that NVIDIA has, um, you know, their um, uh, you know just the graphics capabilities, and the 3D uh, capabilities feed directly uh, into this model. Um, the uh, you know performance uh, that allows them to do some really intense machine learning and predictive analytics um, on all this data. Yeah, it just fits in, in perfectly. In fact, you know, I've got to kind of ask the question: at what point? Do we stop, uh, you know, modeling just the, the manufacturing floor and step back and go, you know, we can model with enough data inputs, the entire business operation, all the employees, all the customers, all the suppliers, uh, and literally look at a tool like this to say, how can we optimize and use, you know, uh, predictive analytics, machine learning to kind of, you know, even deep learning to go in here and kind of figure out what's the optimal business model. The optimal, you know, optimal, you know, IT model, the uh, optimal operations model, that really makes this work, and because of the collaboration capability, let's open it up and let's bring all our ecosystem partners in from a business perspective. Um, I think it's it's very cool, very cool what they've done here. Yeah, I, I concur. In fact, uh, this is also an opportunity to, for NVIDIA to bring in their AI assets to help drive that uh, scenario, that vision. You know, we're not just talking about you know production on the assembly or a manufacturing uh, setting. We're also talking about the end-to-end -end business operations. Uh, in essence, you know, really taking automation as one example to the next level, and really uh, being able to uh, scale and apply this in a more impactful uh, business case type of way. So yeah, the possibilities aren't far uh, and uh, because of the portfolio assets he pointed to, Fred. And I think, uh, yeah, this is something that uh, is definitely going to be a game changer and something we'll definitely be paying co close attention to. Yeah, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of, of models. Uh, you know, if we're looking at things from, uh, you know, the, the equity side, uh, you know, let's pull out five different models, you know, from, a, you know, the crazy up, crazy down scenario. And let's really see where this all goes. I've got to expect at some point that NVIDIA just turns this in on themselves <laughs> and says, what can we do to leverage all of this capability ourselves to improve what we're doing uh, moving forward? So, um, Ron, I really appreciate you taking the time here on this today. Um, again, this is uh, just a quick wrap on the uh, NVIDIA Omniverse 
uh, announcement, uh, something that uh, I think we both agree um, is something that will definitely have some significant impact uh, in the marketplace. And, and I'm really interested now to see where some people really start to think outside of the box in terms of leveraging this with NVIDIA's technology and then all of the uh, animation, the 3D modeling, the storytelling and everything else that's out there. So uh, uh, definitely a, a big move worth following here. So for uh, my colleagues at uh, Futurum Research, uh, my colleague Ron, thank you, Ron. Uh, I'm Fred McClyman signing off of this edition of the Futurum Web, Futurum Tech Webcast. Got it right. <laughs>